Welcome back to another episode of Bridging the Gap. Today, I'm gonna be doing something not very complicated, but still very, well, not very, but like difficult for me. I'm going to be jumping from this rail, this very uh, smooth, thin rail, bouncing off this pillar, and then 180 precisioning back onto this rail. The reason why I wanted to try this challenge today is because one, bounce movements really isn't something that I do at all, but it's something that has become more popular recently. And I've also been competing in the Midwest Parkour League events. This bounce 180 challenge is something that I've seen happen pretty frequently as a skills challenge. I wanted to practice this move a little bit more for myself here in the environment. Um, Recently, I was at Fool's Jam. I was talking to Marquise Johnson, um, his Instagram handle somewhere in the description. I was asking him how he got so good at learning flip precisions. I watched him not know how to do a flip precision to becoming very, very proficient at flip precisions. The one tip that he gave me was if there is something that you are scared to do, aka flip precisions, you should identify one factor that challenges you in the setup. So specifically for flip precisions, he said that you should either focus on whether or not you can stick the landing, like actually precisioning it out of the flip, or if you can actually make that distance. When the setup is that you don't know if you can stick it and you don't know if you can make the distance, that's when it becomes way too hard and you're just not gonna be able to do it. I think for anything in parkour, this is just really good advice for you know, overcoming any of your fears. So there's only one thing that I picked out that is challenging for this splat bounce 180 precision thing, which is when I hit the wall, I am temporarily blind to my landing and that 180 precisioning back on the thin surface is gonna be difficult for me. That's it. The distance is very close, just about five feet. The height, the environment, none of that is that big of a problem. I just have to make sure that I jump with enough force into the wall and that I am confident in my foot placement as I'm turning around and landing back on the rail. So let's do this. First things first, I'm gonna double check the distance between the rail to the wall. So that's five and a half feet. So my safe landing zone is really just right here. So my line should only be about this wide, maybe thinner. Yeah, thinner is always better. I'm just gonna do this movement on ground as many times as I need to until I feel comfortable knowing that I can land in the exact landing zone as the width of this rail. So a few things that I'm definitely watching out for. I have to make sure that I'm jumping with enough force to go into the wall to where my feet doesn't slip. Because if I don't do that, my foot will slide down and I won't have enough traction against the wall to push away from the wall. Second thing is looking once my foot hits the wall back in my landing zone because I want this to be as not blind as possible. And I have this very bad habit of when I'm doing flips, I don't spot. So this is a good way for me to teach myself better spotting as well. That wasn't too bad, so I'm gonna move on to the next progression. If you follow this rail all the way up, that far wall right here is the same distance to the pillar and there's conveniently another pillar there. Um, yeah, that's definitely a no-go. I can't really find another spot to do a step two progression, so I'm gonna move straight to the rail. A really helpful way for me to break mental barriers is to do the next step down progression um, as many times as you can, and then try to move immediately into the next step up progression. 
once you step up to the thing that you're trying to do, if you get freaked out or you can't do it, go immediately back down to the previous progression. Do it as many times as you can. Memorize that feeling and then try to take that straight into the actual move, knowing that you just have to execute it exactly like how you have been. You're scared your foot naturally goes to the rail because you don't want to you don't want to shin yourself so aiming to a rail is actually a little bit easier than like an arbitrary white line on the ground because there's a little bit more stakes I'm gonna try a few more times and I'm gonna see if I can stick it getting better. I'm landing it consistently on the balls of my feet, but I am not a precision genius, uh, so got to keep going. I didn't even hear that guy coming. He was so stealthy. challenging definitely give yourself some breaks because things that require a lot of coordination wear you out uh, not only muscularly but also um, what's the right word neurologically I don't know that your body becomes uncoordinated as every single time that you do it and that if you don't rest then you can become uncoordinated enough to the point where it's dangerous don't rest for too long that you get cold again but give yourself enough rest so you can at least catch your breath that's what I just did hopefully this one's it <laughs> Alright, thank you for watching another episode of Bridging the Gap. That was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, and I think that other people would appreciate this challenge as well. So, let's try this. Go to the description below for my Instagram handle and DM me a video of you trying something similar to this at your local spot, and I'll try to put it either in the beginning or the end of my next video. So, yeah, good luck. Give it a shot, and I'll see you guys next time.